Welcome back to episode two of Life Change TV. This week's episode is entitled Five Ways to Bounce Back Powerfully. And we have a fantastic guest for you this week, Catherine Luti. Welcome to the show. I'm thrilled to be here, Mark. Hi. Awesome to have you. So you have an amazing story. I was reading through your, your, your documents, your, your introduction to you, to your life, to, to the situations that have taken place in your life. And I know that you've been through some really kind of difficult circumstances and situations in your life, and you've used that to propel forward. So I'm looking forward to sharing with our audience exactly how to bounce back powerfully. So please, Kath, do explain to us who you are, well, um, I'm the Mission Marketing Moolah Mentor, and what I do is I have people in personal development, um, so coaches, trainers, PTs, mentors, and so forth, and I help them create a sustainable income. So I help them get clients. Um, clients, of course, as you well know, are the lifeblood of our business, uh, and they're not just um, our key to financial sustainability, but they're our reason for being, you know? You, you, you're like me. You, you know this stuff, yeah? Clients to have a business and you've got to have clients to have a sense of achievement you've got to have clients to learn how to do this thing so they're everything and that's what I help people do help them get clients so, and uh, yeah I love what I do I'm really passionate about it so you sound it so you seem to be running a really sort of successful business now now it wasn't always like that so take us back to the events in your life that that were really kind of a difficult period the events that you had to overcome yeah, so I mean, I'm in marketing now and I love it, but I come from a background of kind of anti-marketing. I mean, marketing in my profession was forbidden as such. So I'm, I used to be a vet. I grew up in a veterinary household with all creatures great and small. And um, I was always in the practice with my dad. I was going out with him treating goats and pigs and cows and dogs and everything. So I was always there and that was supposed to be my life, right? So um, I did it. I became a vet. I studied at Berlin Uni and got my degree and then I got into the job and suddenly everything just felt wrong. And so uh, it's so, really so, weird sorry. experience. Sorry? Sorry. So you've been, this This was your life and you, is it something that you wanted to do? Did you want to do this or thought that you wanted to do it? Well, it was more a case of it was. There was no question yeah. of wanting. That's one, one of the things that when I look back, I, I never, I, I never felt like um, I wanted something in particular. I just got it. You know, I just did it. That's one thing in particular that has actually changed for me when I started coaching. So it's a good point. Yeah. No, nobody pushed me into it. Yep. It just was. It, it was always, you know, it wasn't, everybody expected it. Um, and um, I didn't, you know, it, well, it just was literally, uh, there's nothing else I can say. I just did mm. it. Mm. So you got so, to, you got, so, so how long was the course? Seven years. <laughs> and then you started the job and decided you didn't want to do it. What was what was the reason that you thought I don't want to do this anymore? Was there an event that happened? Well, it actually started well before. It never like when I went into uni, it, it started to fall apart. It never felt right. It always had to be, but it never felt right. So I started my job, and um, it was in England because I'm married to an Englishman. And um, three months into the job, I got attacked by a pit bull at work. And um, that was a pretty scary experience. So what happened was that we were in the room with this dog who looked pretty placid all together. Nothing to worry about. And I wasn't worried about any dog at that point. Yeah, I'm, I've mm -hmm. grown up with a man's best friend, no problem. Yeah. So suddenly this dog just turns around and jumps on my nerves. And I kind of walked in and tried to save her because she was flying backwards and I kind of tried to help her and um, he just turned on me. So, um, yeah, pretty scary experience. It, um, uh, he was he started to chew on my arm, which um, has a pretty nasty scar on it and I uh, have in hospital scar. for a week. So it was a quite scary experience. Yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. So what, what, so, so what next? Like you've, you've invested your life into this career. So what, what happens next? Well, what happened next was that I carried on and just, um, you know, how everybody tells you to get back onto the horse and stuff like that. So I got a job, a hardcore job in a really low social area where I knew there would be lots of really weird dogs and people. And I got this job and it was literally like 
from eight to midnight sometimes we just had people coming all the time they were queuing in front of the door so um i did that for three months and i felt better about it but um i never felt the same about it i have to say i got a, a better job after that but i never felt the same about the job so then we moved to australia and here we were and i couldn't do the job because they weren't accepting my degree anymore so I had my out finally. <laughs> so that was that. Did you do your research and intentionally move to Australia so that you couldn't practice being a vet anymore? No, my my husband just couldn't handle Germany. Yeah. So one day, um, by that time I had a child and I was pregnant, five months pregnant. He decided then it's time to move to Australia. So when I moved to Australia, the first thing I did was have a child. <laughs> Six weeks awesome. into arriving in Australia. Wow, that's pretty long. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So tell me about a big, and I've done the research, um, so this big event that happened in Australia, explain what happened next because it's a really powerful story. Yeah, well, what happened next was actually I was a couple of years into being there. I'd been home with my kids for a couple of years and really loved it. And then um, we had been planning on this romantic getaway weekend as we would do every year. and. Um, we had been playing this for a while, but as the time came closer, so the place we had chosen was Mary's, but don't ask me why, and you know, I think today I just think it had to be or something. Um, so Mary's Villa it was, and when the time got closer, I mean, there was all this talk about the fires, and it was had been baking hot for weeks and weeks. So I called, you know, because I said, is this a good place to go right now? And they said, oh, don't worry. We haven't had any bushfires in 15 years. You'll be fine. Okay, so we went. And of course, <laughs> we ended up in the epicenter of Australia's most deadly bushfires. And we were right there when it started. And um, it's funny, I actually remember going there and being there the first of so the afternoon. I remember that as being a really blissful time. And then suddenly my husband said to me, can, can, can you just come out here and have a look at this? <laughs> and yeah, basically I walked out of a cottage and looked up and there was this, massive orange thing rolling down the hill and I'm sure you've seen those pictures there were pictures in the paper afterwards and I always thought they were taken right there you know these pictures of this hill with this orange fireball coming down and that was what we saw and is this is this the event that was known as the fires that was known as Black Saturday Yes, that's okay. exactly what it was, Black Saturday. So we were right there, right in Marysville, right in the epicenter. And um, basically, uh, we saw this thing and we just ran inside, grabbed a few things. We didn't pack because I think we kind of gathered that this was going to be quite serious. We just jumped into the car and drove off. But by the time we were in the car, I mean, the flames were actually licking at the car already. So it was really pretty darn close. And then uh, we tried to get out of the area. So yep. So just, just sorry, how many died in that event? Uh, about 220 people. Yeah, it's huge, wasn't it? I, I've spent time, I'm, I'm currently in Melbourne now, and I have a number of friends that were, were in, in, you know, involved in sort of Black Saturday and managed sort of the relief process and were involved in the relief, relief process and the shelter. So, you know, I, I understand that it, it can sound like a, a story, but actually being there, experiencing the heat. And my friends say that as soon as they walked out the door, it it was a suffocating heat that just 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 surrounded you. You know, it's 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 quite surreal for anybody that wasn't experienced it. But obviously, the effects of the deaths were, and and not just the deaths, but the loss of homes and land as well. I know if you go to that area now, they're, they're still recovering, aren't they? Yeah, they are, yes. And I have to say the aftermath mm -hmm. um, was pretty rough on me as well. Sure. Um, you know, I'm German and um, we obviously have this history of the Holocaust and mm -hmm. we learned all about it. And one of the things that keeps coming up when you talk about this stuff is survivor's guilt. And I always thought, why would anybody feel guilty because they got out? But funnily enough, I, I experienced an incident of that um, sort of the first few days out because it was just it was horrible to hear what happened to other people it was just and it was everywhere you couldn't escape it I was just crying for three days I just couldn't I couldn't get myself back on track it was just it was really really pretty <laughs> pretty horrible experience sure so so thankfully you managed to escape or did you just guys just get in the car and drive 
No, we actually, wherever we drove, it was thick with smoke. And what we had heard was that the most dangerous place in a bushfire is actually to be on the road. Mm. So we were scared. So we stopped at this pub and we ended up um, staying there overnight with heaps of other people who got stranded. And that was actually um, a pretty bad night as well, because like you say, the worst thing was actually the heat and the smoke. And um, to this day, I wonder how could we breathe that all night and survive? Because my eyes were constantly streaming from it all night. And every time you couldn't stand it inside because there was no electricity. Yeah? So we didn't know what was going on. The whole thing was pretty surreal. You know, people were just at the bar drinking as the fire <laughs> happened. And outside, you know, nobody knew what was going on because we didn't have any TV or anything. We just saw fire engines, you know, they'd go yeah. that way one minute, that way the other minute. And it was just total chaos out there. So it was pretty, yeah, but the breathing was... And it had not been experienced to that level had it. So bush fires are, are quite common, but the extent of this fire, so there was a level of maybe complacency that we've done this, we've been through this before, it's going to be fine. And yet this time it was it was far more significant than what they'd ever experienced. Is that correct? No, totally, yes. But yeah. It so, was it was really a surreal experience. So what was next for you? How did this experience change your life, Carl? Well, that's the good bit, you know, and they always say um, the Chinese have the same word for crisis and opportunity. So we got out <clears throat> and um, I have been in contact with a coaching institute in Melbourne, which I'm sure you know. <laughs> many, many of the people who listen will know. And I'd spoken to them before, a couple of months before, and I decided $5,000 uh, was going to be a bit expensive for me to, you know, to... Yeah do this coaching thing but of course I came out of that and three days later I rang them and said when can I start and that was that was where it all started so I did what a lot of people have done um, I did the, um, the coaching the NLP the trainers training the mastermind and I always knew that um, I wasn't going to be a personal coach or a life coach or uh, even a business coach on a, on a corporate level I always knew that my passion was going to be small business. Um, and I always knew that um, I, pretty, I pretty quickly got the hang of this marketing thing. It just fascinated me, maybe because it was so not me, because I remember actually rejecting a job as a vet when they told me they were going to review my sales numbers every three, week, uh, three months. And I was like, I am a veterinary surgeon. I care for patients. I don't sell stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in marketing, and now he's a marketeer. Well, no, I'm a marketeer, but I think um, it is a good background to have because I think um, sales can only be done from this place of integrity and from a place where um, it is for the other person. Like, I speak to many people, many, many business owners during the day, but I don't actually even try to sell to every single one of them because I work with a very specific kind of um, business and also a very specific kind of person and in a specific situation as well. So, um, I, you know, I'll refer people to other people if I can't, if, I, if, if it's not a match. So I think it's a good place to come from. Maybe it's the best place to come from is anti-marketing place because sure. you've got to do it the right way. Yeah. So through, throughout, through your experience, you've developed this sort of five ways to, to bounce back can you can you share some of those those ways that you that what you've learned in terms of how to bounce back well um the first thing i've learned is really dealing with change and um change has been something that's um ever present in my life and it's not just been these massive changes but um just in the last 18 months, I moved from Australia to Germany to Switzerland with two kids and a dog, you know, that, that takes a bit of resilience. But the fact is that you can experience change or you can embrace it. And when you embrace it, um, you can actually get a lot of stuff out of it. So I've learned so many things through change. Um, like these days, I'm over, I'm, I moved here four weeks ago. I've already been out like six, seven times at weekends. I've met heaps of people. Um, you know, I already feel at home here. I've got friends here. You know, it's really, but you've got to learn to actually um, come to a new place and go, yeah, go out and do stuff. So, so um, 
it's really a big difference between just cha letting change happen to you and actually being a change agent and doing something with that change. So I'm writing this note down. So the first is to embrace change. What's next? Well, um, again, a lot of people will have heard this. Uh, one of the first things I heard when um, I did my intake weekend at the Coaching Institute with Sharon Pearson herself at the time um, was this um, say yes and figure out how later. And that alone was worth paying $5,000 for, trust me. Um, things I've done, um, just saying yes and not... Uh, worrying too much about what would happen, um, not just in my business, in my life as well. So now um, I don't hang around when people ask me if I could do something for them or if I want to do something with them, if I want to go somewhere, even if it's kind of, ooh, I don't know, no, I'll, I'll first say yes, there's film about it, you've probably seen it, yes, but it's quite yes. funny. Uh, and of course, um, I do reflect upon things, but... Um, the opportunities that you can take uh, when you actually say yes. It's, it's been pretty big for me. So say yes. So two, say yes. What's next? Yes, take action, right? And this is something that is in the coaching industry. Um, this is so ripe. Um, there is, um, I love the coaching industry. I, I totally loved doing it every time i walked through the door at the coaching institute it was like alice going down the rabbit hole and discovering a new world at the bottom it was so exciting and i love it but there like every industry it has its flaws and one of the flaws of the coaching institute industry is that it's self-perpetuating so you go into the first course and the first course is really designed to get you into the next and into the next and then they tell you, quit your job. I mean, this is what I've been told, you know, quit your job and do this as a business and it's going to be fantastic. But by the time you've done all the courses and all the training, you're left without resources so that you can actually invest in your business. And um, one of the things I've also learned is that um, you don't have to be a millionaire to build a business these days and you don't have, have to have hundreds of thousands of dollars in the back, but you have to have some, yeah? And you have to have if you quit your job where well, you have to sustain yourself um you have to have a budget for a bit of branding a bit of marketing um you just have to have something to get started so um what what happens to coaches is that they are overtrained, you know because they do training and they often do it fast yeah so they are and a lot of points in their journeys are totally overtrained, and that ends up in a lot of confusion they just don't know what exactly they want to bring to the world when what they should be really doing is take one thing and bring it to the world. You know, I always compare it to software. You know, you see all the software and you've got a 1.0 version and a 2.0 version. And that's how you should do it. Yes, yeah? sell one thing that you're really good at. Don't overthink it. Just get out there. Um, as I said in the beginning, clients are your lifeblood. They teach you, they train you. And whatever it is that you, you actually can deliver, sell that today. Don't think of your online program that you're going to be doing in two years' time. Um, don't think of uh, you know that, that vision, that shiny thing that you really want to do. Start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can now. Take action. Just do it. And that works really well with your um, say yes. You know, if you take action on whatever it is that you're bouncing back from, it could be relationships, it could be career, it could be some event or situation in your life. But if you take action, it, you know, if you don't dwell on whatever it is, you could have you could have just sat there, couldn't you, and just been, oh, poor me, I've I've been in this situation, and how do I cope from? It could have become your identity. But you chose and I could to... still be doing it. And I could be sitting here all alone in Switzerland, which is quite a hostile country to strangers, you know. And everybody tells me, oh, my God, aren't you scared of going? And they hate Germans, you know. And so I'm like, no. <laughs> and I'm already, after four weeks, I made a heap of friends, you know. So, no. So please. for audience, whatever you're bouncing back from, to take action. And as you take action, you that kind of is the foundation to this this saying yes isn't it that you take action and then whatever it is that you are going to take action with whether it's relationships whether it's dating again whether it's career whether it's chasing that career letter you take action and then you say yes to whatever it is that, that you need to bring about changing and then as you say these doors open for you don't they they do yes Point it's magic. yeah <laughs> number four 
Number four is quite simply live now. Yeah. Um, the past is the past. And I mean, I'm, I'm saying stuff here that all the coaches have heard before. But um, living today, there's no other day to live in. And um, yes, it's good to make plans for the future. Um, and yes, you know, your, your past defines you. But it's all about today because today you're going to lay the foundation for what is to come. And um, the only happiness that you can find is today. And for me, the purpose of life is happiness. So there is um, business and there is success and achievement and all of that. But you got to be happy doing it. And you got to really try. And this is a journey like um, I, I don't think anyone can say that they can do this all the time, except for maybe Eckhart Tolle, who's, <laughs> who's written the book. But, um, you know, really bring yourself back. Um, a lot yeah to learn this um, do live now because tomorrow might never come you don't know and that's really important with with respect to the comment in the context of the comment that you've also just made that that you focus on the one thing that you need to focus on and you don't you know elevate these big shiny goals to to use your words these big shiny vision and, and a lot of people do that, don't they? Whatever sphere of life it is, that one day I will be this in my career or I will have these two kids and a, a partner or whatever it is our goal is. And yet, as you say, we don't live now because we're, we're always living on the hope that tomorrow will bring about that difference and that change. And we'll, we'll suddenly, I used to do as a kid, like I, I used to have this, I wanted lots of money when I was younger and, but my goal was always at that point in time, at some point in the future, when I have money, then I'll be able to relax and have fun and enjoy myself. And, and as you say, you're never living now because you're living on the hope of tomorrow that may never, ever come. So that's a really good point. Thank you. Actually, that's, that's actually, for, especially in the coaching industry, there's a bit more to it than that. I have a bit of a pet I wouldn't say hate, but um, this vision thing that we do in the coaching industry, um, of course, it's great to have goals and to have a vision, but uh, like you say, it, it quickly turns into the shiny thing, and it actually um, often doesn't do people as much good as you think it would, because um, because they want to do that, you know, they want to get there, that it inhibits them often from doing what they actually can do today. Absolutely, that's a really good. Have you experienced that? that? I think that that is one of the things that um, you know, a good thing turned bad because um, a lot of people um, they say, no, I'm not going to do this today because I can do better and I need more training and um, next year I'm going to do that and it's going to be so much greater. And it inhibits them from actually learning. So. And it can also have that reverse, can't it? That that if you hold this big dream, this goal high above you, then you can almost feel inadequate in the now. Well, I'm not as good as I will be at that point in time in the future when I can do X. So as you say, you're still not experiencing life and the fullness of life now. Point five, I'm excited to hear about point five. <laughs> point five, well... Um, it's actually not. Um, it, it's actually not, not not so much a strategy of bouncing back, um, but it's more like a piece of advice for people who go into business or who are in business. Just don't expect this to be easy. <laughs> that's all. Um, I just um, that's another flaw I think in the coaching industry that. Um, there's this ca carrot dangle in front of us of running our own business and how great it will be. And business has um, certainly got its moments and I couldn't do anything different. I literally, I felt like waking up when I started my business, but um, it's tough. It's not easy. You have to really, really, really be committed to this thing, persist with it. Um, delayed gratification becomes a whole new thing that <laughs> for me um, it was never something that I aspired to. But, you know, I still haven't earned the money back that I put into my business. You know, I've been in this three years now. And for somebody very impatient like me, um, I really had to you know, give it and give it and give it. And I make good money now, but um, I've invested so much into this. And um, 
don't forget about the time as well. A lot of people don't value their time at all. They try to do everything on the cheap, but they forget that the time that they spend with it. So you've got to value your time. So it's probably going to take me another five years to get back what I put into it. But, um, you know, you've got to expect it to be tough, but you also got to expect that you've got moments like you couldn't have in a job, moments of achievement that would just beat anything else. So um, totally encourage any, everyone to do it, but just be aware that people are struggling out there. I get people struggling all the time. Just yesterday, if you look on my Facebook page yesterday, we had a big conversation about somebody who's really seriously struggling in their business. And it breaks my heart that um, that is actually the reality. So be prepared, you know, have some backup, have a backup plan in place, have a little bit of money that you can rest on um, so that you can put this together and uh, make this work. And then when it works, it's just the best thing in the world, <laughs> isn't it, Mark? <laughs> it certainly is. And I mean, this is this is really great stuff, Kat. I, I think all this applies not just to life coaches or to business owners but anybody that is is struggling and is bouncing back from something in their life so we've talked about embracing change we've talked about saying yes taking action live in the now and don't expect it to be easy and i think that's important in any area of life like i i i know you've just basically trashed coaches but i i do, <laughs> I do coaching and you know that people want change in their life, whether it's career or relationships, and and we can expect it just to be to be easy. You know that 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 thing will come along because it's meant to happen, or or, or because we believe that we deserve it. And if we start from this attitude that we actually deserve nothing, we're here, we exist, we deserve nothing, and we've got to we've got to open doors, we've got to chase opportunities, we've got to enjoy the fullness of life. And as we do that, it's like saying, it's like somebody saying, look, I, I want to meet the, the woman of my dreams, I want to get married and have kids, but yet they sit at home all day and they're watching TV and there's stuff in their face full of crap. The, the, do you know what I mean? You've got to go out there. So I think this attitude of not expecting it to be easy actually brings about a level of peace because when you find it easy you know you can understand that it's okay it's not meant to be easy i am meant to struggle i'm meant to work through that that's part of me growing and learning and changing and becoming the person that i want to be so these are great tips for every aspect of people's lives so thank you so much for sharing those well, that was great fun thank you for giving me the opportunity to share no worries Cass so tell us once again your work that you do and where people can find you if they're interested yes so I help people get more clients um, I the mission marketing Mula mentor because I work with people who are on a mission to build a great business who are committed to their mission I help them with their marketing and um, that obviously then turns into Mula because there's no money without sales and there's no sales without marketing and I love what I do and basically it's about getting people who help other people. So that could be uh, your personal trainers, coaches, mentors, authors, and I help them actually get out of their head, get stuff done, and then market the message that they have so they can have a sustainable business. And I really, um, I make a point about not being one of the people who sell people into being millionaires, you know. Um, the coaching industry is uh, an industry where, um, you know, we get told that everybody makes it rich. And um, the fact is that most people don't ever get to sustainability level. And um, I take people to sustainability level um, where they can actually support themselves in their business. And then they can use the strategies to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I'm happy if they do. But, you know, I get people come to me that want to make 30 grand a month and they're not making 1K. And it's kind of like, well, shall we, shall we just start <laughs> with... Um, we start rolling first, hey? Yeah, so, and, and you know, do you really need 30K in your life? You know, and do you know how many people actually make 30K a month, like on a professional level? You know? <laughs> um, so, and it so... It can be done. Like, the coaches have potential. I'm not denying yeah. that at all. Yeah. But um, for me, it's about sustainability first. Absolutely. That sounds like great advice. And what is your web address that people can find you on? 
Well, you can find me at kathluti.com, quite simply, um, or of course I'm on Facebook, Kathluti Mentor. Um, that Google's pretty well these days. So hang out with us on Facebook first if you um, if you're interested. We have a lot of conversation going on, and it's good fun. So your website is kathluti. That's k-a-t-h-l-u-t-y dot com. That's right. Heaps of free stuff on there, heaps of information, so and heaps of videos. <laughs> I'll also add that link to, um, to, to the website um, that we show your, your video on so people can just simply click on that and find more about you. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your powerful and personal story. We really appreciate it. It was great. Thank you, Mark. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody. This has been Life Change TV once again. Join us next week for some more exciting interviews where we will be sharing with the principles of life change to help you to create the life and live the life that you were created to live. Take care. See you then. Bye. Bye. Thank you, heaps, Kath. I, I, I apologize that I introduced you as Catherine to start with. No, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm not fuzzy. So what exactly, do you consider yourself a personal coach or do you do business coaching or do you do a bit of um, I, Yeah, well, no, I, um, so I actually do uh, some similar stuff to you really, but um, I help, uh, it, it, part of my work is, um, is with people who want to help other people. So I help them, I wouldn't say it's, it is marketing, but it's also repackaging it's about telling their story in a different way. It's about creating an event or an idea or a concept around the nuggets of, sort of, um, of their work, um, some themes of their work to help them and then help to help them get to the next level. Uh, but also, you know, I, I, I coach people, the public um, who want to go through change um, to change an area aspect of their life. Um, I'm working on a book right now. Um, yeah, so I'm just I'm just building a, a network of people that want to help people change lives and and kind of do that powerfully together. Cool. So yeah, it'd be great to engage with you further. See how we can work together. There might be opportunities to refer people on to you, people that I uh, I work with too. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's let's definitely stay in touch and and, and see where we go from there. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Great to uh, catch up with you. And uh, I'll put this on the website. I'll send you the link when it's live, and I'll email it out to my database and all that sort of jazz. Thanks. Cool. Have a fantastic day. Keep up the good work, Mark. Thank you, Kath. Have a great day. Bye. See you soon. Bye. -bye.